Hello everybody, how are you doing? Somebody once said there are three kinds of people in this world, those who can do maths and those who count. Well, um, I can assure you I'm one of those people who can't do maths. So when I say to you that today is 40 days into the lockdown, I think I'm correct, although I wouldn't put much money on it. 40 days, remember old Cliff, I'll give you 40 days to get back. You remember when you used to bop as a younger person. But 40 days is an important, or rather 40 is an important number in the Bible. You remember the children of Israel spent 40 years in the wilderness. Um, Jesus spent 40 days out in the desert soon after his baptism. And after 40 days, when physically he was absolutely shot and exhausted, and mentally and spiritually, probably at a very low place. After 40 days, the spiritual test began, the moral test began. Maybe that is so for us at the moment. We've seen through 40 days and we've retained a good humor and we've been positive. Uh, now, now it's pushing it a little bit. And so maybe now the real test begins. So Jesus is weak. Mentally, he's probably hallucinating. And Satan comes to him and says, hey, if you, if you are the Son of God, why don't you turn these stones at your feet into bread? And it was a real issue for Jesus. If by the word testing, we understand that a, that a test is something difficult, is a conflict, is a challenge, and Jesus has a challenge here. He, he probably could have done that, but what does he do? Does he use his earthly powers for his own ends? Or is this a testing about his priorities, about his agenda and the natural appetites of his body against what he knows his heavenly Father wants him to do? And that it, the final analysis, whilst helping the hungry or feeding the hungry is important. It is about showing mercy, about kindness, about grace, about loving God with all our heart and soul and mind and strength. But it's not all about feeding. It's not all about turning stones into bread because tomorrow people will be hungry again and the day thereafter. And Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And as important as physical matters may be, we forget all too quickly that essentially we are spiritual beings, and that if we don't feed our souls, we live, live lives of, of purposelessness, and to know Jesus is to know life, life in all its fullness. And that's not just a cliche. It's to know the one who is the source of life and who alone can satisfy the deepest longings and yearnings of our hearts. So then there's the second temptation, the second testing, where Jesus is taken to the pinnacle of, of the temple and probably in his mind hallucinating and Satan is standing there with him and showing him the people moving backwards and forwards. And as he stands at that high point of that magnificent building, Satan says, now, why don't you jump? Because if you really want to impress them and not go the way of the cross, people are really going to take to you. Just jump, because doesn't the Bible say he will give his angels charge over you? Imagine the last moment just before you're about to dash your head on the concrete floor. These angels come and they pick you up and they swoop you away. Can you imagine the reaction? They will follow you. Believe me, they will follow you. And uh, Jesus looks at Satan and says, Satan, don't put the Lord your God to the test. Because Jesus knew that whilst people may be impressed, Impressions come and they go. Nothing changes in the inner being 
of our lives just because we are impressed by something. It needs something far greater than mere impressions to turn us, to turn our hearts back to God. And then the third one, I'm not sure where they go, but they're in a high point somewhere and Satan shows Jesus all the nations of the world. And understanding that Jesus had a universal mission to bring all peoples back to God. Satan says, here's the deal. You fall down and worship me and all the nations can be yours. And Jesus says, do not, no, he didn't say that. He said, worship the Lord your God and him alone should you worship. Again, Jesus be focused, not going to be seduced by power, by influence, by wealth. No, he was here to do God's will, fulfill God's purpose. Life is very short, friends, and we may be tempted to go in all manner of directions in our lives, but whatever you do, Keep your eyes fixed on him. Seek first the kingdom of God and do what he requires of you. And all these things that we worry about, they'll be taken care of. So, on this 40-day anniversary of lockdown, just some thoughts from the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness. And the real test began on this day, 40 days going forward. May God give you the strength and the grace to keep positive and to keep trusting him. We'll chat later.